Hello everyone, my name is Mauri De Aro, and for those who don't know me, I do videos on YouTube about video editing, shooting and color grading. So in today's video, I want to talk about something that I've been learning in the last months. As you know, my YouTube channel is pretty new, so I had to learn a bunch of new stuff. And something that I want to talk about that before starting YouTube I had no idea how to do is how to film yourself, and especially how to film yourself at home. So in this video, I'm gonna give you all the tips from a filmmaking point of view that they're very important when it comes to filming yourself. So if you already have a YouTube channel or you're thinking in starting a YouTube channel or you have to film yourself for any other reason, this video is for you. Tip number one. The first thing I think is the most important when it comes to film yourself when you're alone at home like me right now. You have to be able to monitor yourself. And by that I mean that you have to be able to see yourself when you are recording. And the way to do that is either to have a camera that has a flip screen like my Canon EOS R6. That is the best case scenario. If you don't have a camera that has a flip screen, it's gonna be very complicated for you to be able to frame properly and like look at yourself while you're recording. Now I have to mention that there is also other options in case you don't have a flip screen. One of them would be to buy an external monitor, like a small HD for example. And the other one is one that I'm currently using, even though I have a flip screen, there is this right here. So let me show you. The new Canons come with a system that you can monitor yourself using your iPhone. So if you see right here, I can monitor myself. So I have the iPhone beside me all the time and I can see. So the only thing you need to do is download the Canon app and you'll be able to do everything from your phone. I'm able to stop recording, to change the shutter speed, change the ISO, and it's actually fantastic. Because to be honest with you, right now, I barely reach the camera. Okay, the second thing that I learned about filming myself at home is composition. And by that I mean, if you're talking to the audience like I'm doing right now, you have to frame yourself in the center. Okay, I understand some people want to get creative and frame themselves on one side, on another, and try different things. But on YouTube, you must center yourself right in the middle. Reason being, people feel more comfortable when they're talking to them and you are center frame just like I am right now. So make sure you're in the center of the frame. Also, make sure the camera is eye level. Right now, this camera is literally on my eye level. So you as the audience feel you're literally sitting right in front of me, like having a conversation. If you put the camera under, it's gonna look weird. And if you put it up, it's also gonna look weird. So make sure it is eye level. And make sure also you use a tripod so the camera doesn't move and stay still the entire time of your shoot. The third thing I learned about filming myself is the focal length. Now, you have to use a wide lens. And by that, I don't mean a fisheye. I mean something between 20 and 24 millimeters. Because if you use a lens around 20 to 24 millimeters, that pushes you to have the camera close to you. Right now, the camera, as you can see, I can touch it right here. So with this focal length, you're actually replicating the real distance that I would have with someone sitting in front of me. If you go and shoot something like 50 or 70 millimeters, it will look like I'm very far and talking to you. Like look at these two examples. So this is 24 millimeters right now. It looks very natural, good distance. But if we change it to 70, as you can see, I look like I'm very far from you and it just doesn't work. So make sure your focal length is between 20 and 24 millimeters. The fourth important thing I've learned, it's actually very useful to have a camera that can do autofocus. As you know, my background is in filmmaking and we never use autofocus, but I can tell you that for these kind of videos, it is perfect. Right now I'm using the Canon EOS R6 and it tracks my eyes. So if I get very close, I'm sharp. And if I go very back, I'm still sharp and I'm focused. And that just works perfectly. Now, if you don't have autofocus in your camera, what I suggest to do, you place something where you're supposed to sit and then get your sharps and then you're ready to record. But the moment you move in and out, you're gonna lose the focus. But for example, right now, I switch to manual focus and if I move in, then my face is out of focus, as you can see. So that's the only problem. The next thing I want to talk about is lighting. As you know, lighting is one of the most important things when we're shooting any video. And my suggestion always is to kind of have the light 
a little bit to your side. So right now I have a massive saw box right here and it's clearly on my left side right here. I have to say that it's not fully on the left side, it's more center left, but it's still to one side. So as you can see right here, I have a little bit more shadow than right here because the light is right there. So the light comes here and we create a little bit of a shadow on this side. And that's very important that you don't put the light right in front of you direct because your face is gonna look so flat and no contrast to it. The moment we have a little bit of contrast on one side and we have a darker side on our face is when we're creating a little bit of depth and that's gonna look so much better. And sometimes I don't shoot my videos at night and when I shoot during the day, my suggestion is to take advantage of any natural light that you can have. For example, in this past video I shot, as you can see on the right side, there is the window. So what I did is I placed the light on the same side to replicate the light that was coming from the window. So if you're shooting in the middle of the day and for example, you have a window on your side, what you should do is place your artificial light on the same side. Don't place it on the opposite side. You have to make that light be like if it was like another window. So this way, no one will be able to notice your lighting. And the next tip you should be doing when shooting yourself is to actually use soft light. Soft light is more flattering than hard light. It's more natural looking and it makes the subject look more welcoming, friendly and warm. It actually makes skin looks better. So for those who care about that, it makes your skin look more smooth and your eyes be brighter. In my case, I'm currently using the Godox VL150, but what it makes it look very nice is the parabolic softbox I have. And if you don't own a light like this or a parabolic softbox, don't worry, because there's many other ways to create soft light. One of them is, for example, using something like this, that it will just diffuse the light. So if I put it right in front of me, right now it's blocking quite a lot of the light, but if I were to get rid of that softbox, you will have pretty much the same effect. And I also want to talk about using practical lights. Practical light is any light that you actually see in frame. For example, that light over there, this light over here, or that light over there. And I wanted to show you these new lights I just received from the company Pixel HQ. I have them right here. So this is the RGB video light G3. And basically with this light, you can attach it to your camera or you can use it as a practical light. And that's what I'm actually doing. So what's really cool about this light is that you can actually change the color temperature and intensity, and it's really bright. Like this is 10%, 25%, 50%, seventy five percent and a hundred percent as you can see this is very very bright and it also has like different modes that they're pretty cool so you can basically go here this is supposed to be police so you can replicate police pretty cool this for example replicates a TV screen pretty nice Lightning, SOS, RGB fast. I actually threw a party recently and I used this light and it was pretty cool. Like, look at these colors. I don't know, pretty dope, right? So this is called RGB Video Light G3. I'm gonna put all the information down below so you can check it out. Really nice light. And the other light I wanted to show you is the one that I'm using as a practical light. That is this one. And this is the Pocket Video Light Liver by the same company, Pixel HQ. And it's really cool. This is just simpler. It has a little softbox, but I use it as a practical light. And you can also change the color temperature. So this one is a little bit smaller than this one. It's actually really nice. So as you can see, I use it as a practical light. I just put it back there and it looks pretty nice. So thank you very much, Pixel, for sending this. Actually, this is not sponsored by them. They just sent it to me. They said, if you want to check them out, if you like them, great. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to check these lights and I love them. So if you want to check them out, link is down below. Thank you. The next thing I want to talk about, it's one that I think it's very important and a lot of YouTubers, they never, never, never think about it. Please leave as much distance as you can between yourself and the background. Try and separate as much as you can yourself from whatever background you have. 
And I understand that sometimes that might be hard because maybe your house is very small or the room that you do your videos doesn't have much distance. But try and think and be creative on how can you have as much distance as possible to have your background be far from you. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you're shooting with a shallow depth of field, you'll be able to separate yourself from the background so much better. By doing it this way and using a shallow depth of field, you'll be able to, you yourself, be the only thing that is on focus and the rest will be out of focus. Your background will be out of focus. And doing it this way, the image will look much better and also your viewers won't pay attention to your background. If your background is out of focus, people won't pay attention at your background. If your background is very close to you, everything will be in focus and sharp, therefore people will be able to see everything that is around you and that will distract them. So that is very important. Just try and keep as much as distance as you can between yourself and your background. And my last tip that it might seem very obvious, but sometimes we forget to do it, is the following. Make sure you have good quality audio. So in my case, I decided to buy a lavalier. That is, I have it right here. And I've been using the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now I understand that this might be a little bit expensive for some of you. In my case, I bought it because I use it when I'm filming interviews, but it's just one of the best investments you can do. Invest in good quality audio. Keep in mind that YouTube is two things, video and audio. And people tend to forget about audio. So you should not do that. You have to make sure your audio is very clean and clear and everyone can understand everything that you say and there's not like random noises coming around. Now, if you decide to have another type of microphone, that's fine too, but make sure it's very close to yourself so the audio is very clean. And once you have good quality audio, make sure to record yourself at the beginning, talk a little bit, and then stop recording, go and put headphones and listen to what you just recorded. This is also like a very important tip because sometimes we just take for granted that everything is being recorded properly and then we record for five minutes and guess what? Something was wrong. The audio is not recording properly or maybe the battery died or something like that. So always shoot for like 10, 20 seconds, do some tests of audio, make sure the frame is fine and then go and watch it yourself to make sure the video is gonna be fine. And that's it for today's video. Those are all the tips that I've been learning over the last months and that I consider that everyone should know in case they're considering filming themselves, either for YouTube or any other platform. And as long as you keep all these tips that I just told you, your videos will look very nice and professional. So keep that in mind. And if you have any other tips that you think I missed and you think I should have mentioned, please put them in the comments down below. And as always, if you like this video, just give me a like. It actually helps me a lot to grow on YouTube. And if you like this kind of content, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys very soon.